your motherfucking star. Like I said in the last video, man. Make sure y'all go subscribe to my second channel. The description will be down below. Couple's channel, man. So make sure y'all motherfucking go subscribe, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know I'm going to do these long ass videos, man. Y'all know that. I don't know Friday anyway. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to start, you know what I'm saying, doing my day. You know what I do reaction and shit. Come from the start by studying. So, there's going to be certain days I do reactions. I'm going to go back on that shit. So, yeah, if, if you if you been fucking with me, rock, rock with me, you know how, you know, you know what's so. up. Anyway, um, shit, we got this shit. <coughs> Brado Bang and Boosie Badass are blood cousins, but they also on opposite sides of a deadly war in Baton Rouge. They were scheduled to perform at a show together later this month. But now Fredo says his cousin kicked him off the lineup and is messing with his money. Here's what went down. Fusi is like the Gucci man of Baton Rouge. He's a legend in the city and has been running the game since the early 2000s. But Fredo Bang has become one of the hottest rappers in Baton Rouge since he was released from prison in 2018. Fredo, Fusi, and another Baton Rouge rapper named Webby was all supposed to perform at a show called Louisiana Takeover on March 26th. But now Fredo's been removed from the concert and believes Fusi is responsible. He posted a concert flyer to his Instagram story and captioned it with, they kicked me off this show, but that's what happens when you're the most hated. Then he posted another slide that said, real n****s don't stop other n****s money, no matter how much they don't like them. The last picture he shared was a DM he sent to Boosie that said, damn blood, you taking food out my mouth? You can't do a show with me on it? That seemed like the end of it, but then Fredo posted a video ranting about the situation and said, you don't f*** my music, f*** you. I didn't even know that. You ever had anything bad to say to me about me? Fuck you. And as long as you fuck with another, fuck you. You fuck with probably me anyway. If I don't text you back, it's fuck you. You're down. If I open your DM and I don't respond, it's fuck you. I don't like none of you. Fuck all y'all. Sure. Yeah. Fuck yeah, bro. Yeah, that's like. Delay I really don't, well, I don't know, I don't be fucking no office say shit. Boosie didn't probably have nothing to do with that. I don't know, bro, but fucking up a nigga like money, that ain't lying and fuck, no, I ain't gonna count. I'd be pissed off, too. Nigga fucking up your money, your bag. And I know that, you got Boosie and Webby, Fredo Bang. That bitch was gonna be packed. I would've been mad at the motherfucker, too. They can suck my too. I don't feel like everybody. Fredo also posted a flyer for another show he's scheduled to perform at with Webby, so those two might still be cool. The oh, situation well, between him and his cousin is obviously heated. No one knows exactly what's going on, and it sounds like Fredo don't even know why he got pulled. The beef between Fredo and Boosie goes back to 2005 when Fredo was just a G kid. Money. At the time, Long Boosie's best friend money. was a dude named Lil Ivy. Boosie had already dropped several projects, but was popping in Baton Rouge. Ivy was a street dude who started Top Boy Gorillas before he became a rapper. But he ain't had the same kind of buzz that Boosie did in the industry. Boosie got his biggest breakthrough in January 2005 when he landed a deal with Warner Brothers Records. This was a huge moment in his career, but it led to the beef that continues to this day. Before he died, Ivy Smith thought another Baton Rouge rapper was trying to sign him to their label. Rumors started going around that Boosie wouldn't pick up the phone and get the deal made. And some people believe that he's trying to keep all the shine for himself. No one knows exactly what went down, but a few months later, Ivy Smith was dead. On April 2nd, 2005, Boosie was supposed to meet Ivy at a club. Even though there was some tension with the label issue, there wasn't actually beef. When Boosie got to the club, a fight broke out and he ended up leaving, which is a move that probably saved his life. Later that night, Ivy left with two of his homies and they whipped. But the ops caught up to him and started letting off shots, killing everyone in the car. No one was ever arrested, and the mystery behind the hit is still affecting Baton Rouge today. Ivy's wife was pregnant with his son, Ivy Smith Jr., when he got killed. Boosie stepped up and said he would take care of him and adopt him. But that rumor started going around that he was actually involved in the See, I, I ain't even, I ain't even, I ain't even know that. Damn. Murder. According to the rumors, Boosie had Ivy taken out because of the label issue. It ain't exactly clear what went down between them or how serious the situation really was. What? It all happened back before social media. And anyone who was actually around him at the that, time bro. kept their mouth shut. Oh. Boosie did not have anything to do with Ivy's death, but the rumors never really went away. Ivy had a lot of family in the city, and they all heard the stories about his best friend getting them killed. Even though there was no concrete proof Boosie was involved, Ivy's nephews and son turned against him. One of Ivy's nephews, who eventually went after Boosie, is Lil Yoshi. Yoshi is from TV. I did not, I ain't know Lil Yoshi with Ivy. That is blind. Okay. G and one of the most savage shooters in Baton Rouge. He's currently facing seven attempted murder charges related to seven? his beef with NBA young boy. Seven. He, that but nigga before he went to war seven. with the NBA crew, he sent shots at Boosie on social media over the little Ivy situation. 
Check out our video on Yoshi for a full breakdown of his life and career. Boosie Boy B is another Baton Rouge rapper affiliated with Boosie. When he got home from jail, Boosie tagged him in an Instagram post and called him the real head youngin. Yoshi no. called himself the head youngin, so he saw it as a diss. No. And Boosie Boy B took the situation further when he claimed on a track that Boosie had a $100,000 bounty on Yoshi's head. This wasn't the first time that Boosie allegedly put a hit out on the rapper. In 09, one of Boosie's main rivals, Chris Noosey Jackson, was killed in Baton Rouge. A dude named Marlo Mike, who was one of Boosie's close affiliates, later confessed to the murder. Noosey was beefing with Boosie before he got killed, and the FBI received info that Boosie placed a $30,000 bounty on him. Lil Yoshi made it clear he wasn't backing down from Boosie. $30,000? I mean, you, you do got niggas in the trenches that, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, hungry. $30 ain't like shit. You can spend that in an hour. You go to the right place, you can spend that bitch in an hour. In his crew. Yoshi's known in the streets as a real demon. So even if there was a 100K on his head, he was probably ready for the smoke. He was about to turn up the disrespect and turn the son of Boosie's best friend against him. By this time, Lil Ivy Jr. was a teenager and his older cousin Yoshi got him to record a diss track about Boosie and his crew. At one point, Boosie was planning on adopting this kid as his own, but now he was teaming up with his ops and dropping diss tracks about him. Ivy Jr. also hopped on live and aired Boosie out by saying, Call one of my own for my school and call himself a he adopted me. Never, you ain't never gonna adopt me. Then Boosie's son, Tootie Raw, jumped into the beat, hey, really dropped the track fucked up, where he hey. rapped. You know that I'll be thugging? I don't fuck with no gorillas. Right away, response. <laughs> that nigga snap, man. Boy, I, I reacted to that, dude. I know I reacted to that shit, but that nigga snapped. The disc, but he posted a video of him dancing to the song and sarcastically called it the hardest track out the bottom since set it off, which is one of Boosie's tracks from his early days. Before all this went down. That nigga pissed, bro. It seemed like there was mutual respect. Fredo in response to the diss, but he posted a video of him dancing to the song and sarcastically called it the hardest track out the bottom since set it off, which is one of Boosie's tracks from his early days. Before all this went down, it seemed like there was mutual respect between Fredo and Boosie. Even though it wasn't tight, Fredo reached out to him before and asked to be put on a show, but Boosie never responded directly to him. Boosie said in the interview that there was no disrespect, but Fredo ain't know the whole story. He said, it's a lot of stuff that Fredo don't know about. Fredo my cousin. It's a lot of shit this nigga don't know about. It's a lot of shit he don't know about as far as that situation. I found out he was my cousin by my great auntie. She told me a year ago or something. It ain't no hate or anything like that. Anybody in the city who doing their own thing, you know I want to blow. I feel like when niggas blow from Baton Rouge, you know, they give us the power to make Baton Rouge the hub like LA, Atlanta, and shit like that. Any who's trying to blow is good. I ain't tripping on nobody. But yeah, he my cousin. The two of them ended up running into each other at the airport sometime later and talked everything out. Fredo said, Boosie explained the situation between him and TBG, but neither one of them has spoken about it publicly. Apparently, they want to keep Baton Rouge business in Baton Rouge and not drag everything out in the open. The which only details that were made public was when Fredo went on the breakfast. Which is the best thing, you know what I'm saying? Keep your shit that's in your city and your city. The whole the other cities ain't got to know what's going on in your city. Come on. Club and told them TBG was started in the 90s, so I don't really know what they got going on. Boosie was kind of TBG. There's basically badass entertainment in TBG. It was family. You know, family business, something happened, I don't really know. When he came home, kind of like a, you know what I'm saying? Like Glory Boy Entertainment. It's you know, shit. I get, I, okay, I get that, you know. Everything was good. Something happened. I don't know. Boosie's been asked about his history with TBG many times by fans in the press. But he's made it clear that he ain't gonna talk about anything that went down in his home city. He clarified in an interview that Fredo wasn't an op, but street politics was keeping them from working together. Fredo got Boosie's number when they met at the airport, but he thinks it might have been fake. He told the Breakfast Club crew, we talked, I got his number. He said he's gonna do some music with me, but he never picked the phone up. I ain't gonna lie, uh, I think he just gave me a wrong number. So with all the history between Boosie and TBG that no one knows about, there's no telling what's actually going on behind the scenes. Boosie ain't explained the concert situation yet, and chances are, he probably never will. It's he clear he ain't the type of dude who wants to make his business public. So for now, all we have to go off of is Fredo's comments. Fredo's trying to get back in the game after his house got raided by a SWAT team in July 2021. Lil Yoshi had posted bond for his seven attempted murder charges and was staying with him at his house in Miami. The police connected Yoshi to another shooting in Louisiana in 2020 and went to Fredo's house with a warrant. Inside the house, they found a stolen car, body armor, and gun. Fredo was booked alongside Yoshi because he had convicted. God damn, nigga. You, nigga 
fucking thing. We going to war zone or some shit? He can't have guns and armor. His bodyguards later came forward and claimed the armor was theirs, and his lawyer said okay. Fredo had no idea the car was stolen. Fredo's free now, but it's unclear if he's still facing charges. If there's a chance he'll end up in prison, he'll definitely want to do as many shows as possible before getting locked up. That would explain why he's so mad about getting taken off the show with Boosie. If the clock is ticking, he only has so much time to make enough bread to take care of himself and his family while he's gone. But hopefully, that ain't the case. Just some fans thought that if finally get to see Fredo and Boosie at the same show, the whole thing came crashing down. Fredo seems way more upset now than he did back when Lil Yoshi and Boosie got into it. So there might be something serious going on that we don't know about yet. Baton Rouge is a wild city, and everyone involved in the situation. Yeah, that whole situation crazy. I don't think bro really did that shit. I think you know what I'm saying the, the, the promoters and shit be doing that shit. You know what I'm saying for stopping the violence really, and then they just you know I don't know how that shit go for real though. But you know what I'm saying I just I, I think they were having mad. That being said, get a bit of thoughts on that subscribe. See, I'm gonna come with another video. Subscribe to my second channel. Walk down, walk just say we talk about me. No, I can't fuck these niggas that cap, ayy. And most of these niggas be cheap, ayy. And most of these bitches be free. Real about shit, I keep shit neat, ayy. I'm smart out of hell, but play dumb. I come from a whole different breed, ayy. Ayy, let me get a hand clap. I just heard this shit, ayy.